Greetings, programs. Per Pianissimo here, and welcome to Feed the Beast Interactions. There are well over 250 mods in this pack, and you need a beast of a computer to run it, but it is a lot of fun, especially for someone like me who is not really experienced with modded Minecraft. So we are going to jump in and get started. Although I won't be reading every quest as it comes up, there is a lot of information. So be sure that you read all of the quest boxes, but I will try to provide some extra hints and tips that I've picked up along the way. So let's see what our world will be like. So we start here in a void world. Apparently the beta testers kept dying because it was quite difficult. So they started this void world so you could get set up with some resources before you headed out into the overworld. Now you start with a little EMC table. This basically is fed points. There are some things that have points. You can see the EMC down here. You put your Tome of Knowledge in there, and the way this one works is it unlocks everything at once that is possible to be in this transmutation table. Things have different values, so you can deposit them. For example, I deposited that book with an EMC of 32, which means that I could pull out one sapling and then I don't have any more points left to spend. So what we're going to do is start with the quest tab up at the top it'll say welcome to interactions this quest line will lead you through how to play the pack it is absolutely amazing the way they have done this and they've given you a lot of information on how to actually run the pack i'm going to grab a couple of these here mainly i want to unlock these down here to get this extra book I do recommend, again, that you read all of this, especially if you're new to modded Minecraft, and even if you're just new to the pack, because this pack is quite difficult, but they have made it to where they all work together, and it is quite amazing. All right, so let me claim all of those little rewards there. I'm also going to put that book in there. What I wanna do first is pull out some gravel. I'll turn the gravel into flint make some shears and use my hotkey for vein mining. I don't remember what the mod's name is or excavate. Just so I can get some more EMC value to put in the table here. There we are. So now you can see I have quite a bit of EMC there. I want to get another couple of saplings so I can get some more wood. And let's get some supplies. We'll get some ice, get some sticks, some cobblestone. Look at all those pretty colors. We're going to have a lot of fun with those later. And some gravel, lots and lots of gravel. So let's take half of that and make some stone rods. This is how we're going to make our first tools. Lots of flint, and we're gonna go like that. Okay, there is our pick, our ax, and one more piece of flint for our shovel. Now those go along with this little stone rod set here. Whoop, up here, oh, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't have to go right next to it. And there are all three of our tools. Put those there. And there we are. Get this stuff off here. Okay, now, quick word on the lunchbox. This is really very cool. You click to open it, and then you can put different food in it, and it will automatically pick what you need based on nutrition, I believe, and you know whatever your hunger is. I'm not going to put the fairy imbued apple in it because it actually has some buffs on it. So then when you crouch click 
and it shows the little open icon now when you're hungry if you click on it you just click on it like regular food and it will munch something out of your lunchbox i thought that was just a really really cute idea all right so the first thing we need to do instead of getting regular wood we need to i guess it would be right click there we are and this is the only way to get planks here if you try to put your logs in your crafting grid it will not give you planks so we're going to start with eight planks there we are and do I have any left up here let's go ahead and regular do a regular mine of that choppity chop all right go here go ahead and grow that now this time I just regular vein mined it and let's go over here and make some tools Ooh, I ended up with nine didn't quite mean to do that you can see how making planks that way really takes the hunger out I'm going to redeem some quests because they give you a lot of food here at the beginning yum so what I can do is crouch click and then open my lunchbox let's put a few of these things in and then I'm going to open it up again and go ahead and munch this pepper here and then it will pick something else from my little box here awesome all right let's put the crafting table down open her up and we need to make a special crafting table pick axe and shovel in that order for a basic work table there we are we're going to have a lot of these types of crafting tables as the game progresses now in order to use this table we need some tools so let's go ahead and make some stone mallets not that many and another pair of shears there is a quest for these but it has to be a healed pair there we are now I'm going to claim some of these I do believe they give you a toolbox aha okay so I did not get credit for the work table it takes a pick there we go did not get credit for that because I did not have a healed pair of shears on me at the time shame on me all right so let's put that down and now for making that I do get the toolbox as a reward now this one you place next to the work table you can open it up directly and you put all of your little tools in here you can put shears and mallets and we're also going to make some saws so you can see how these appear into your work table so as you use recipes they will come in here and I will show you how that works in just a minute let's make some saws first give me my bookmarks back and let's make uh, about 10 of these and dump all of those in and let's go ahead and make a couple more pairs of shears get them in there and the first thing I want to do is replace these tools and you can use your standard gear recipes with flint and it makes flint tools. Let's grab that and make a few axes, I think. Woof, okay, not quite that many. We'll make that many. Well, okay, that's that's plenty. Little bit of lag there. Okay, let's get to work chopping down our trees. Now with this flint axe, it will automatically cut down all the logs. It's extremely useful. I'm going to go ahead and do a bunch of these at once you can do a little dance here a little crouchy twerky dance and it will bone meal or fo force the trees to grow very quickly let's see and you won't worry about ruining your keyboard in this one because they have adjusted it so it happens very quickly like this oh tree in the face very quickly there I am ah, 
too close, a little too close. All right. Oh, got another tree here. Need about 20 wood. Come on, there you go. Grab all these guys and this is the first way that we can get planks is by putting them in the work table with a stone saw. Now I need about 20 logs. I need about 40 planks. Just like that. And yes, they use that durability. However, you can combine these. In fact, I'll show you that now. You can combine these in your inventory crafting grid to combine their durability. So let's go ahead and take that wood out of there and I think I want to make a chest. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Use this the saw. Now if you try to make a chest in your regular work table, it has a different recipe that uses more resources. So it's best to just make them in here with the saw. So the first thing we want to do is make an item that's going to help us get more logs without having to dump them into that table each time. So that is the water powered saw. And we got these flint blocks as a quest rewards. We did not have to make those. Need to make some wooden pressure plates. And there we are. We have one water powered saw. And this one, I think it's kind of strange that it does not give you the quest reward until you've gotten down to the clay kiln. So we'll have to actually pick this back up again. <laughs> so it needs to be put, placed right above a flowing water source. Let's go ahead and grab that terracotta. We will need that for quest as well. In fact, there it is. And break the ice. It does have to have a block underneath the ice in order to create water when you break it. So if you're breaking your ice and it's not making water, that may be why. Now the saw has to be placed in a certain direction in order for it to flow. Now if it doesn't work, just pick it back up and try a different direction. How this works is you place your log on it. <laughs> and then it appears up at the top as planks. I think that is just very, very cool. But it takes a lot to just sit here and load each individual log. We want to automate that as much as we can. I like to have it right next to my crafting table. So as I'm crafting, it all just falls into my inventory. A nice thing is this pack has given us a precursor to the hopper called a whopper. I love this thing. Love this thing. Okay, so it takes wooden trapdoors, you know, basically just wood. Now the problem with the whopper is it doesn't have an interface. You just have to dump things in either with a chest or just pop them in manually. Whoops. Come on. Please don't go over the edge. You do have to crouch place pointed in to the saw. And then you can just take your item and then click on the thing manually. This interface does not update very well. The numbers don't accurately reflect what's in there. Nice thing to do with this is just stick a chest on top so you don't have to manually put those in. Let's put that chest up here. So as we come up with more logs, we can just dump them in and have them processed. All right, let's make another chest because I've got way too much junk on me. I very much dislike having so much stuff in my inventory. All right. There we are. Ah, come on. And I don't know what all of this stuff that I should be getting rid of, what I should be keeping. Let's see. We need a few extra axes. Let's do this and that's another thing this table sometimes it dumps the extra tools in your inventory <laughs> you just have to remember to put it back in every once in a while all right let's get our sticks back 
and all of our EMCable items I like to keep on me. Okay, now we have a very early automation on the plank production. <laughs> Let's go ahead and make a few more trees and get some more wood so we can do some things around here. Another nice thing about modded Minecraft, at least in some circumstances, see how I've got my axe here when it breaks the tool. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> Torch the tree. Some leaves. Okay, so when it breaks the tool, it replaces it with the new one in your inventory slot. That's very, very convenient. All right, we have over 40 logs. Let's go ahead and put some of those into the chest to have them made in planks. I'm going to deposit some of my sticks and some of my saplings. My goodness, I only have one apple after all of that? That's uh, very sad. Let's deposit all of that. And I do need a pair of these shears. I need to get some EMC because I really want to expand this void base. I think that I am going to go ahead and make this my home. Being fairly new to modded Minecraft and knowing that this pack is quite difficult, <laughs> I'm going to do whatever I can in the void world because no mobs will spawn here. No aggressive mobs, no passive mobs, pretty much nothing will spawn here unless you force it to spawn. There are ways to summon mobs and force spawning. But I would like to start this out with a really nice base of platforms that I can build on. So let's move forward and get some leaves for EMC. And silly me, put all my saplings back when I was going to shear the leaves. Was not very smart. There we are. I have to remember to come back and get my logs every once in a while. Don't want to let them despawn. pick up the last of our logs. I've done fairly well at getting a bunch of leaves to put into our table. That should give me plenty of blocks to pull out for making some platforms. I've got all these different colors I can play with and a chisel. Now take a look at this. You click and open the chisel and stick your cobblestone in here and look at all of these and you can pull the colors directly out of the emc table with the exception of orange i don't remember the orange being in there but i really like to put my outlines in this of course we need to have our standard per colors pink magenta and purple and let's get another thing of cobblestone although this will work with any of them and let's pick something else to go with our marker cobblestone. Some of these I think have connected textures. This one says it does, but I'm fairly certain there are others that do. Well, let's put about half of these logs in here. And let's get started in building. I'm going to do an F3 and G and show my chunk borders. Apparently these heavy tech mods, you want to be careful that you build entire machines. They have things called multi-block machines, which you lay down three or four or five different components actually in the world. And then it creates a structure called a multi-block. You want to keep those in the same chunks. You've got a chunk border right here. You need to keep them inside the same chunk, otherwise you can have potential problems when it loads in and only loads half of the machine and it can break them. So it's best to try to keep them all within chunks. So I'm going to create my platforms based around that idea. So let's have some fun with this really early base building.
Okay, as you can see, I've gotten quite a bit of the beginnings of my base done. I've outlined the chunks. Let's go ahead and turn the chunk borders off. And a little bit of what I need to get started. I really want the builder's wand to be doing more. So I want to get to that point and then I will build out a few more platforms. Now, what I'm talking about is this wand here. And it says kind of, you know, it actually works really well. So I need to get to the point where I've made the alchemy array dust and then the low covalence dust, which is down this way. So there's the arcane ashes. And is where's the covalence dust on this? I don't see it. Uh, I guess it isn't, is it? It doesn't show up. It doesn't show. I'm trying to remember where you need to build it, but it's... You need the Infinity Dust to make it. Oh, you actually get a reward when you make some of these. Yeah, so that's what helpful. we need for Arcane Ashes are Ashes, Sugar, and a Blackened Spirit, which means Bone Meal. Uh, sugar, which means Sugar Cane. Ashes, that's... I think you get that from... Huh, Pressed Wax. I thought you got... No, you can use it on a hammer in the in the work table with with a low-grade charcoal to get that. That's what I thought. I was like, where... There it is. It's on the very end. There we go. That's how I usually got it. Yeah, low-grade low charcoal with the hammer. We can use... Strainers and clay kiln. Yeah. All right. Our special guest, the Corbinite here for a moment. Hey. Okay. Yeah, water colanders. I hate doing these things. So let's get grass because that is the cheapest. That's at EMC of one. That is the cheapest we can use to make twine, which is a substitute for string. So let's go ahead and grab that. Going to use up quite a bit of sheer action. Looks like we might need to put some more shears in there. Then this should make twine. Twine. It, it, and use some more shears. Do I have any flint left? I think you there it is. <laughs> you can't even see it. Alright. Let's go ahead and do a bunch of shears. And you, 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 and you. Get my last bit of twine. So what we need to do is make a couple of these. Uh, one dense net in just a net. Yep, need two of those. It makes two. It makes two dense nets, but it doesn't make two normal nets. Next is strainers. Let's hit those Strainer. and whoops. Let's make some whoppers. Yep, whoppers and fences and chests. Oh my. And fences these, right? Or do they get it backwards? Yeah, that's fence. Alright. Now, am I able to make those now? Uh, oh, except I'm in the wrong table. <laughs> <sighs> and you have to use the hammer. Yeah, it'll pull that in though, so that's nice. In the there we go. Yeah, and, I, and you have to take your stuff out though. And they use a 30 durability every single time. You have to take your stuff out manually though, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So, all right. Oh, and I need a couple more chests. A couple more chests. Um, two. Okay. We may have to build out that platform just a little more. Yes. Yes, the embossed cobblestone. All right, so where's the middle? Oh, right there is there. no middle when you're doing this, when you're doing an even square. Oh, uh, yes and no. Yes, yes. Okay, now no. here's something that is very nice to know early on. You see this little plus with the brackets on it? You point down and you put a block underneath. Is that awesome or is that awesome? All right, let's go ahead and put our chest here. And now I need to build those out a little more. I'm going to lose some of my blocks here, but... And you might be wondering, what are those blocks? 
It's the only one of those colored cobblestones that you can make slabs out of, and that is... The crag rock. Right. Crag. Crag rock cobblestone. Now, there is a red crag rock cobblestone, red, red rock cobblestone. You can't make slabs out of this either. This is the only one that you can make slabs out of, and what's really cool about that is, is when you put them in a double, the top looks like stone. Right, and it makes it nice and smooth. You can thank Viral for that one. I was watching his videos, and I had to figure out how he was doing that. So let's build our hoppers out. Let's see, two more. Yeah, let's go ahead and at least get this ready. Really want these platforms built, but it's so much easier when you have the wand. All right, let's get, oh, you know, I need to build even more whoppers. Need a whole party pack of whoppers. Wooden trap doors and more planks. Whoa. Starting to run out. I'm gonna have to go chop some cheese. Chop some cheese. <laughs> <laughs> chop some trees. Okay, this is much better. And let's get the strainers going. I've got them on me now. Here, there we go. This will take a little bit to block in. There and there and there. And I will go ahead and put two more back here at some point. But now I want to block those in so I can put some water up there. Let's take a spruce tree. Spruce. Oh, let's go right. Put it on our grass. Let it grow. Did that take all of the wood? I guess it did. There we are, and cut those into planks. And grab one of these saws. There's the rest of my planks. Now we can do this in our inventory. I'm going to make some strips. Uh, there we go. I don't know if that'll be enough. Let's see. Cut these down to there and then a bunch more. And then it has to the sideways. There we go. Spruce wood plank strip. Do, 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 do. 48. 48. All right. Now, I want to do this. I have to actually put stuff along here. I did not realize you could put blocks inside of those. Yep. You certainly uh, can. And there was no strainer. That's a, okay. No, I don't have the strainers built yet. We'll get them in there. Let's go ahead and line all of these. Yes, line, like literally. Back up. Now, that should hold the water in, at least at the top. I'll have to put dirt at the bottom here until I line the middle with strips. But that is going to take a little bit longer. I just want to get the basics in for now. Like I said, that dirt will just be temporary to make sure the water doesn't go anywhere. Okay, and then we need water. Because you can't make the water go without actually having water. Well, having blocks underneath it to begin with. Yeah. Let's go ahead and put the nets down. Oh, you know what? I didn't even make the nets. <laughs> Let's grab my stuff here. No, it was missing something. There we go. We need two survivalist strainers. And they don't stack, so there we go. Sometimes it disappears out of the crafting table. It's all right, it's still there. And two of 
these. And each one has 120 uses. Now we put them in here. It should just pop right in. Yes. Boop. Uh, Boop. And then do this. You see it pops the other one right into your inventory after you use it. It's very nice. Boop. Now, if I break these, and I can vein mine it, do them all at once. Wow, I... That should run them. Pretty nice, huh? Yeah. Did I... I did. I got all of those completed. And this is a neat little gadget that tells you what your efficiency is. 10% is the best we can do as far as I know. Plus 10%. Right, plus 10%. And it will be the same for these two strainers when I make those. However, we need to get some things from these before I can make those. The other stuff right. too. It'll look a lot nicer when I remove the dirt and I can put actually more hoppers or whoppers and chests in there to supply these with nets because they have a limited... Oh, that's not what I wanted either. Let's... Uh, did I click it on the... Let's try an open hand Yes. and click on the base and not the top. See, it has a limited durability, but these will catch certain things. The, okay, so the survivalist strainer with the one with the little, the little dense net will catch this stuff. Now these come into the EMC table, but you need worms so you can do the third strainer. That's right, it's a fisherman strainer. And you need clay from this. This is how you get all of the clay. And there is the fisherman strainer, which we will make when we get worms, because you actually need bait to run this. And then you get all of this. And the survivalist strainer, which gives us all of these seeds to be starting with. Okay, well, immediately I know we need sugarcane, rice, chamomile, and cotton as well as grass seeds are very useful. Now the rest of it will definitely be needed coming up, but for now we're looking for the sugar cane, the cotton seed, and the rice. Even the chamomile is not quite as important yet. And things should start coming in. There we go! And we have our first cotton seed. That actually completes a quest when you just pick it up. In dire need of string. Right, because that's how you get string, is by growing cotton. At least that's one way, you know, in addition to our twine. All right, so we need to collect a few more sugar cane, and then the clay, and then the worms that we can use as bait for our strainers. In fact, that's why don't we finish up the strainers, and we can call it a day. And now you can see we have plenty of sugar cane to be making those strainers with. And we'll go ahead and take the worms as well. And something I just conveniently forgot. See how this grass is bright green? In the lower left hand corner it says vivid grass. Vivid grass by Botania is for the specific purpose of planting sugar cane without any water next to it. <laughs> so, had I remembered that convenient little fact, might not have waited quite so long for my sugar cane. Let's go ahead and make those two strainers. The nice thing about these is they do not break. Where these have durability, these do not. Okay, I'm going to have to do a stealth replace here. This, this, and zap that in there. Just like that. Over here. Boom. All right. Put the nets in. And now we have to give it some bait. Otherwise, it will not work. So, seven for you. And seven for you. And by the time we come back, we should have caught that coveted bone that we need for one of the next steps in our quests. So I would like to thank you so much for watching. I'm having a lot of fun with this new series. This is a very difficult pack and I expect this to last me quite a long time um, with some frustrations along the way, but um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun learning a lot of these mods in uh, such a, a pack. So 
Thank you again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, play hard, die often, and leave a good looking corpse. This has to play. Now the saw. Wow, English. I really want some cheese right now because of that.